For those of you who don't know me and our visitors, my name is Elizabeth Reed Fong, and I'm your MC for this library presentation. This morning we started with a celebration, and Dr. Kumar continued with celebrating about what, with what's going on in the world of developments and IT and teaching. And now we continue with acknowledging our authors who have added value to this university. The measure of a good or excellent university, in addition to the quality of its students, is the volume and quality of research undertaken and the outputs of publications coming from that research that adds to the body of knowledge in a subject or subject areas. So this morning, the library celebrates those authors who have contributed to the university in this area since the last VCs forum in 2013. And it is now my pleasure to call on the university librarian, Sin Joan Yi, to elaborate on this author's celebration. Joan, please. In the meantime, we will have the list of uh, publications which should be timed, and you will be able to see those while she speaks. Thank you. Um, thank you, Libby. Um, okay. Um, on behalf of the library, I'd like to thank you all for being present today. Um, this celebration of USP authors is the major event in the library's program. Um, the Authors' Tea event began in 2005. Uh, we wanted to focus on the importance of research and publication at USP and to honor our authors and showcase their work. In subsequent years, we held this event in the evenings and we called them Authors' Cocktail. But from last year, we reverted back to the day event because uh, I think that the people are more available during the day. And we also wanted to uh, piggyback on the VC's l and forum um, to get more people to attend. Um, but also, we wanted to provide a link, a bridge, between uh, research and publishing and teaching and learning at USP. Um, I note that uh, Dr. Kumar had actually referred to this in his, uh, in his uh, speech or in his presentation when he talked about the inseparability of teaching and research. Uh, so that's what we would like to do. And we'd like to thank the VC and also the DVC, Acting DVC LTSS for allowing us to be part of this event. This year, as you can see from there, there are lots of entries. Uh, we have citations there. Um, there are 252 items in that bibliography. Um, out of that, there's 81 from FALE, 64 from FBE, and 97 from FSTE, and 21 from other sections, or they are multi-faculty ones. So um, uh, that's a real big improvement from last year. Last year, we only had 135 in total. Um, these items, as you see, are on display at the back there, behind the stage. Uh, they may be consulted after, during morning tea time today, and afterwards in the library. Uh, one of the criteria for including the uh, works in the display and in the bibliography is that the library must hold a copy. Okay, so all these are held by the library. This year, we obtained many citations through the USP Research Depository, uh, but were not able to acquire all the actual publications. So we had to drop many citations from the bibliography. This shows that many of our authors are actually not depositing their works with us. Some may have uploaded um, only a citation or an abstract with the research re repository without also submitting either a PDF or a paper reprint to the library. If neither the research repository nor the library has the full text of your work, then we have not included them here. So if there's any complaints, please come and see us and deposit your copy. Once again, we would like to remind you that USP author, to remind USP authors of the importance of sending copies of their publications or letting us know how to obtain them. I would like to thank those authors who have agreed to speak today about their research. Um, I'm very happy to talk to anyone else. And 
I acknowledge the huge number of other people who have very similar and very, very good projects, um, and particularly those in my faculty that are working with communities too and trying to preach that gap between our scientific research and link to human livelihoods and what our region particularly needs from us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ghislaine, for sharing that information with us. I'm sure there are a few of you who will follow up and read her article. Our second speaker, we get a bit of gender balance here, Charles Samuai, is a tutor in the School of Accounting and Finance. Charles has a BA from USP and his research areas include auditing, information systems, and corporate governance, and his teaching is accounting theory. He has two publications in, uh, here today, and uh, I will leave it to him to tell you which one he may speak about, or the two that he may speak about. Thank you, Charles. colleagues. Uh, I have to admit as well, uh, Elizabeth, your email was very misleading. <laughs> I didn't know that I have to do this, so I apologize in advance. If, uh, anyway, it's going to be better. Um, there's some pointers in terms of um, how we managed to um, produce two outputs last year. Um, collaboration. I think it's very important, um, knowing that most of us have a lot of teaching loads, uh, so working with other people actually help. Uh, the first, or rather the research that I want to uh, explain was the, the second one that we did with uh, Professor Duman. This was in relation to the research cluster of USP, and I want to thank the faculty as well as the research office for providing the funding to um, area of tech research. And um, if uh, you guys don't know, this, this is the only research cluster that managed to produce an output this year. So we actually <laughs> been, been proud to be associated with that. Um, and um, yes, I want to thank my, my dean and um, the research office and all those who contributed in uh, helping us produce uh, our research output uh, in this specific week. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Charlie. The email said, would you like to come and speak for two to three minutes on your <laughs> piece of work? I don't think they imagined there'd be this many people here. Thank you very much, Charlie. Our third speaker is Joanna Beasley, the Visual Arts Coordinator at OCAC. And Joanna has a BA from RMIT and a postgrad dip in social welfare. She holds interesting diploma in textile design, degrees in teaching and fine arts, as well as a postgraduate diploma in social welfare, as mentioned. Her experience in special education brought her from Australia to Fiji, where she volunteered for the Fiji Council for Disabled People. Later, she returned her interest in art and became the head of visual arts at FIT, where she curated exhibitions and lectured before becoming head of the visual arts at the International Secondary School in Nani. She's exhibited many times and currently, while uh, based in Suva, Kandavu holds a special place in her life. I now welcome Joanna to speak on a co-authored publication. Joanna, please. I'm very honoured to be here and I really wish uh, Dr Hemstock was here to do this instead of me, but I will do my best. <laughs> the first thing is just an introduction or a background to um, our project or research and how it happened. I thought it would be a wonderful idea to use Benga Island and its natural assets for an art workshop. Dr. Hemstock and I were chatting and we decided to combine science and art to make what became our Echo Arts Workshop project. The question I was 
continually uh, asked was, why go to Benga Island? And I'll just explain why we chose an island. Many of our artists live in the urban environment and we wanted to take them back to connect with the land. There are no distractions and when you're miles away from anywhere, uh, you have to concentrate on what you're doing. We wanted the group of artists from the Oceana Centre to bond and we found that this would be a really good opportunity for this to happen. There was a primary school on the island and I had previously worked with this school when I was uh, working at the uh, International School in Nandi. Benga had so much potential. How many resorts would be willing to let 14 artists come and work in the way artists do? Bits and pieces and seemingly chaotic mess everywhere. Christina and Sam were, those, were the owners and they were willing to do this. Knowing them and having stayed with them, I felt that we could fit in very well in this environment. Our preparations started over a month before departure. We filled in questionnaires to find out how much, of, how much each participant knew about climate change and issues related to what we were going to research. We met every Tuesday afternoon and we set about preparing ourselves to go to the island. Changes were made on our arrival when the potential became wider. So some of the ideas we had did develop on our arrival on the island. What we did was we made art initially and prepared ourselves to take what we had learned to the local primary school. We ended up having a workshop at the primary school and what we did uh, was based on the experience we had as artists working first. And our research proved several things or confirmed some ideas that perhaps we had initially. Much of the success was due to the fact that we used the local vernacular and didn't do a diatribe to people in English. The preparation was very important and you have to do preparation when you're researching to make sure it is very successful. To know the difference between a shark or the name for a shark is, the name for a shark is different in Benga than it is in Kandavu. Short instructions and practical approach seem to do well. Having connections with the place you are working with and to know the locals made the transition smooth. Knowing the environment, and preparation. Planning what equipment is required through using equipment that is available locally, using natural resources, pandanus, food dyes and chalk. This ensures that when you leave, the people you have trained may be working and educate, may be able to continue the work and educate without the problem of access to equipment because what we were trying to do was to empower the people in the village to use what they have to use it as an education tool. One of the other things we found also is that it is really important to understand that people, sorry, I'm just going to, um, that you work on in a way that is suitable for the environment of the people that you're working with and also meeting them on a level which they understand. The artists that work with the community really understood and worked collaboratively. And when we left, the students were involved and I think the physicality of what we did was really important. We gave people who did not have the opportunity to learn. And I think one of the things that we found that art is an incredible vehicle for education. So often it is, um, ignored, but the potential to teach using art, whether it be dance, music or visual art, it gives teachers an opportunity to do something that is often put aside. And to communicate through this method has been proved to be successful and 
One of the other things that we have just recently done which proves this and backs up what our research found is that art speaks all languages, it's accessible to all, you don't have to speak particularly and you can communicate through what you do. The legacy that we left at the school was children were made aware of rubbish and how to recycle. They looked at the environment in a different way. They had their awareness raised about their relationship to the sea and the land, and they saw the potential for using things that perhaps were not used before. And again, just recently, our artists from the centre have made an artwork which was sent to Samoa, and this artwork raised the issue about tuna fishing in the area, and again, confirms the importance of using art as a method to research, educate and lift awareness in the community. And this is what our project has proved. And if you look at our booklet, we have a booklet which is going to be um, exhibited. What I would like anybody who's interested to do is to contact me and I can send you a copy of that booklet which documents everything that we did and how successful our experience was. And also, thank you to the people who made the um, project possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanna. We've heard three speakers who've shared uh, very different perspectives with us. And I think that is what research is all about, getting that broad uh, background of uh, experiences. My little plug for the library. You're all aware that we're an academic support unit of the university and our outreach program takes the form of faculty liaison. All of you should know who your faculty, uh, library liaison person is who can help you with your ASQC papers and forms, find you relevant information for your courses, etc. And one of the more important aspects is our information research skills program that's offered to postgraduate students at 16 hours for over, spread over two Saturdays to the undergraduates through the UU100 program and uh, just modular offerings on the separate databases. So all of this contributes to building the capacity of the research skills of our students so that they may eventually become part of the um, outputs that the university needs to grow from good to great. With those few words, and I know morning tea is waiting, we invite you to take a look at the publications. You may look at them, but you may not take them with you, please. They have to go back to the library. Thank you very much. <laughs>